Math is fun, so why don't we do some math? Hello everybody, I'm Prahar, and today we're just gonna continue where we left off on the 2016 Amy one with numbers 9 and 10. It's gonna be so epic. Alright, so we got a triangle ABC with sine of what? Okay, this is gonna... So, basically we have ABC. We have 40... Okay. Very to scale, not gonna lie. Okay, hold up. 40. And this is gonna be 31. And then sine A is one fifth, and then this is A, and AQR, and then this is RS. So AQR, RS, SA. Okay, and then you basically want to find the maximum possible area. So basically, by SAS similarity or congruency or whatever, yeah, congruency, basically, there's only two options for this, right? And it is uniquely determined by what the angle A is. So there's only two values for the angle of A, so there's only two options for the area of AQRS. So we can just try both, right? So we could assume that first, it's an acute angle. How do we find the area of the rectangle? Oh, wait, no. But the rectangle is not uniquely determined by ABC, though. So you could rotate this ABC over. And, and also, this can't be obtuse, so it has to be acute, otherwise it would like go outside the rectangle. Alright, so why don't we just assume that the rectangle is going to have vertical sides, and we'll call this angle like alpha, and then this is going to be, and then this is going to be beta, and then this is 90 minus alpha minus beta, okay? So essentially, our area of a rectangle is literally just going to be 40 cosine alpha, times 31 sine the other thing. 90 minus alpha, wait, no, no, what? Cosine, 90 minus alpha minus beta. And then we could convert this to sine because we're cool kids. Wait, let me bring up the problem just so my camera is not gonna be there. Okay, so this is the same as 40 cosine alpha times 31 sine alpha plus beta. But we know what sine beta is, so we could expand this. So this is gonna be one, two, four, zero cosine alpha times, uh sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta, okay? And then this is just one, two, four, zero cosine alpha times, cosine beta is just gonna be one minus sine squared beta, the root of that. So that's just gonna be 24 over 20, root 24 over 25, which is two root six over five. So two root six over five sine alpha plus cosine alpha over 5. And we want to find the maximum. Now the easiest way to do this would literally just be to calculusify this nonsense. Should I just calculusify it? I think I'm going to calculusify it. Or... Wait. So ideally, we want to maximize this term and this term. So if we make both of them 1, then it's OP. No, wait, what? No, that doesn't work. How, how do you maximize that easily? Okay, I'm pretty sure there's like gonna be some really nice like product rule nonsense that we could use here, but I just don't wanna do it. Okay, we could just do like sine two alpha plus beta and then subtract sine beta. Does that work? No, we add it and then divide by two. Okay, so that's how it works, okay. So essentially you just wanna maximize this, which could be one. Okay, okay, let me let me explain myself, okay? So basically, we could write sine alpha plus beta plus alpha plus sine alpha plus beta minus alpha is equal to sine alpha plus beta cosine alpha, and then I'll expand it and you'll see how it works. All right, and then if you add these, then like, okay, there's a plus here. So if we just add it, then we get two times uh, cosine alpha sine alpha plus beta, which is what we want. So we don't care about this nonsense anymore. This immediately just goes to uh, 620 times uh, sine two alpha plus beta plus sine beta. And since we know that sine beta is a constant, we be and we know that we can maximize sine two alpha plus beta as one, then we know it's one plus one fifth times 620, which is six fifths times 620. What is 6 fifths times 620? And by the way, I didn't like come up the, uh, with this out of the blue. This is like a well-known der derivation for the product rule. So if you don't want to memorize the product rule, just know the derivation. So 620 times 6 fifths is going to be 124 times 6, which is... I can't multiply in my head, god dang it. 744? 744. Very cool. 
Alrighty, number 10. So, a strictly increasing sequence of positive integers a1, a2, and a3 has a property that for every positive integer k, the subsequent, subsequent, how do you pronounce it? Subsequent, no, I'm kidding. Subsequence a2k minus 1, a2k, a2k plus 1 is geometric, and every subsequence, blah, blah, blah is arithmetic. Okay. So, we basically gotta work down them, I suppose. But they're positive integers, okay. So, that means. Every odd integer is the top and bottom of a geometric series, but it's the middle of an arithmetic series. Okay. So 2016 is equal to what? So we'll divide it by 9. Wait, hold up. And then 2, and then 3, and then... Okay, so 224, and then that's 112. Wait, what? I'm bad. Okay. So 56. Wait, what? Really? 9 squared times... Wait, what? Hold up. I can't do math, god dang it. Uh, times 16 times 7, there we go. Nope, times 32 times 7. There we go, now we've actually got the prime factorization. So basically, we're going to have to divide by a number, then we're going to have to divide by another number. So we had to divide by the square of some number to get a of 11. So we'll just divide by the smallest square, let's say. Or actually, why don't we just start from the beginning and see what happens. So a1, and then we need r a1. 2 and then r squared a3 and then if we use our arithmetic sequence from there it's going to have to be um oh wait a1 a1 so everything is going to be a1 so you don't care about that so 1 r r squared then this this over here is going to have to be arithmetic so we add r squared so it's 2 r squared minus r and then this is geometric so it's going to be 2r squared minus r squared over r squared. This is getting confusing already, very good. Which is the same thing as if we factor out the r, this is going to be 2r minus 1 squared. And then if we subtract and then add, we're going to get, so this is 4r squared plus, minus 4r plus 1. So then that's going to be 6r squared minus 7r plus 2. Wait, so this is like r times 2r minus 1. And then that's that. And then this is basically going to be, what is this factor to? So 6r squared minus 4r minus 3r plus 2. And that's going to factor to 2r minus 1 times 3r plus 2. Okay. Wait, no, what? 3r minus 2. Okay. Oh, so, okay, I think we got our pattern here. So it's going to go 1r r squared and then you switch out one of the r's for 2r minus 1, then you switch out the other r for 2r minus 1, then you switch it out for 3r minus 2, and then the next one I'm assuming is going to be 3r minus 2 squared, which is right, okay. And then eventually you want it to go to a13. a3 is r squared, a5 is 2r minus 1, a7 is this. So you subtract 1 over 2, so it's going to be 6r minus 5, Squared, times a1 is equal to 2016. So it's strictly increasing. So r has to be at least 2. So let's say that r is 2. And it has to be an integer 2, otherwise, actually, it doesn't have to be an integer, does it? But as long as it works, right? So let's say it's 2. Then it's going to be 12, 7 squared. That doesn't work. 18 minus 5, 32. Okay, no. 4. 24 minus 5 is going to be 21 squared. Wait, am I doing this right? So you subtract 1 and then you divide by 2. So this is right. And then we want to find a1. Yeah, it can't be a fraction, otherwise it's going to be bad, right? Okay, let's try 5, then it's 25, no, 6, okay, no wait, 6, 36, oh no, 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 this is, oh, shoot, now it's getting way too big. Well, if it's a fraction, it's going to have to be bigger than 1. Well, I wonder if it's like 3 halves, then it's going to be, 3 halves work, let's try it. So it's going to be over 16, so this is going to go to 126. So it has to be divisible by 4 if we have 3 halves. Bruh. Bro, we're so close. God dang it, why can't I solve it from here? Okay, so let's see. Basically, we have 6r minus 5 squared times a1 is equal to 2016. So as long as r is greater than 1, we should be fine. But we also have to make sure that everything is an integer. Let's kind of let's see, what's 4 thirds? If we do 4 thirds, does that work? 8, 3, 9. No, I don't think that works. Alright, how do you make this equal to 2? So then 7 over 6. 7 over 6 should be fine. Yeah, 7 over 6 should be fine. Okay, so let's say r is equal to 7 over 6, and a1 is equal to 2016 over 4, which is going to be 8 times 63, 4, 2, and then 5, 0, 4. Okay, now the reason why 7, 6 works is because 5, 0, 4 is divisible by 6, squared in fact. So, we should be chill no matter what, 
even no matter what our ratio is, it's going to be chill because our denominator is max 6, right? And our ratio is max 6 squared, so if it's divisible by 36, we're fine. So 504 is our answer. Very cool. All right, and that's basically how we solved it using the second solution. How did they get past it? So they got like, yeah, so basically the only one that works is that. Okay, very cool. Alrighty, that's all we got for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.